Happy yeah. Resurrection Sunday once again, church. God bless Amen. you. Yes, you God do. bless you. Um, I didn't prepare anything because all week long, and no matter which paper I picked up at work, whichever number appeared on my screen, everything came 316, 316, 316, <laughs> every day of this week. <laughs> and we all know what John 316 is, for God yes. so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever should believe it in him shall have everlasting life and not perish. How many of us are willing to sacrifice what God did? Mm-hmm. I don't believe any one of us would be able to do that. You know, um, last night I had the uh, opportunity of having all five of my grandchildren with me. Mm-hmm. And we sat in the hot tub, just myself and my five grandkids. And Tanner was throwing water and he says, I am baptizing you, I am baptizing you. So I said, you know what that means? So I had the opportunity to imagine that to minister to my five grandchildren. Wow. So I explained to them how we, how we baptize and why we baptize. And I said, out of all my five grandchildren, I said, only one maverick has been dedicated. And he said, well, what does that mean, Grammy? So I explained to him how we dedicate and how we give the opportunity of the person choosing it. Because as a child, said, when we're being baptized by our parents, I said, it's not our choice. Mm-hmm. I said, this is a choice that God gives us for us to lead a life with Christ. So I explained to him. And then Tanner said, well, were you ever baptized, Grammy? I said, yes. I said, around 10 years ago. I said, I was baptized right at the church in the pool. You have a pool at the church? <laughs> yes, I do. You know? and, then I, and then I showed him how we did the baptism and how we stay buried with Christ, risen in the new life of Christ. And so that kind of opened their eyes a bit. Mm-hmm. And then I said, well, you know what tomorrow is? Yes, tomorrow is Easter. I said, but you know what the meaning of Easter is? No. So then I had an opportunity to explain the resurrection. Yes. So, you know, I just want to encourage everyone. It doesn't matter how small or how old. When you have the opportunity, you need to take it. Yes. These children are sponges. Mm-hmm. They soak it up. So we have to make sure that we have to, to know the truth so that when we speak it, they can take every opportunity that they need and they can go out and share it. Who yes. said a child cannot lead somebody to Christ? That's mm-hmm. right. Amen. Mm-hmm. Just mm. those words spoken to my grandchildren and even to the ones that are handicapped. Because I have two special needs children who can't speak. Praise God. They still know it and see the love of Christ. Mm-hmm. So I just want to encourage you all. You know, God so loved us. So we need to do, in turn, we need to love so that we can instill in others. Amen. So that's my word of encouragement for you all today. Amen. Oh, Amen. Blessed be your name. Amen. Be and the, the name. Bible says, and a little child will lead them. Amen. So yes. thank Amen. you for that, Elder. We, we never have to hold back and say, oh, well, they're too young to understand. They understand better than we do, and they can serve better than we do because they have less guile and more humility mm-hmm. at that point than we do. So <laughs> praise yes. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Come in to share with us uh, this morning. Uh, the scriptures is the marshals, Brother Alfred and Sister Linda. God bless you. Don't forget your mic. The Marshals. Chapter 11. Okay, come on in. Come on in, my brother. I'm not hearing the Marshals. No. Do you hear us? Yes, I do. Okay. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ornament and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, 
but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abhor two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of the late thought to stone thee, and goest thou hither again. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How about Jesus spoke of his death? But they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them, Plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sake that I was not there. Know the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem after fifteen furloughs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall I rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection, the life, and he that believeth in me, thou he were dead, yet shall be lost. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this. She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ and the Son of God which should come unto the world. Praise the name of the Lord. That's a scripture. Amen. And if you missed at the beginning, uh, the scripture reading, it is from John chapter 11, 1 to 27. Thank you so much, Marshals. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Continue to keep your mics muted this morning. And let's go into the word of God. My message today is very simple. I am the resurrection and the life. Those are the words of Jesus. And so we look at that this morning. We're going to look carefully at how he went to the tomb of Lazarus. All right. And so we're going to, we're talking about his resurrection today. And so. When Jesus had to say these words in verse 25, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Not only resurrected, but the life. And the one who believes in me will live even though they die. Jesus was concerned this morning not only about the faith of his own disciples, but also about the faith of Mary and Martha. Each experience of suffering that we we go through and trial ought to, and I say ought to, increase our faith. But this kind of spiritual growth is not automatic. 
In other words, the increase of our faith is not automatic. We must respond positively to the ministry of the word of God and the spirit of God. Jesus had sent a promise to the two sisters in John chapter 11, verse 4, and now he would discover how they would receive it. Our Lord's reply is the, is the fifth of the I am statements. It is important to note here that Jesus did not deny what Martha said about the future resurrection. The resurrection of the human body is a cardinal doctrine in the Orthodox Jewish faith. But in this great I am statement, our Lord completely transformed the doctrine of the resurrection. And in so doing, he brought great comfort to Martha's heart. Amen. To begin with, he brought the doctrine of the resurrection out of the shadows and into the light. Oh, hallelujah. Are you good? Are you praising God right now? Because yeah. it came out of darkness into his marvelous light. Resurrection coming out of the shadows. You see, in the Old Testament revelation about death and resurrection is not very clear or complete. It is, at, as it were, in the shadows. In fact, there are some passages in Psalms and Ecclesiastes that almost make one believe that death is the end and there's no hope beyond the grave. Mm. But false teachers like to use these passages to support their heretical teachings. But they ignore or they misinterpret the clear teachings found in the New Testament. Amen. After all, it was not, it was, after all, it was not Solomon or David who brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. It was Jesus Christ. By his teachings, his miracles, his own resurrection, Jesus clearly taught the resurrection of the human body. He has declared once for all <clears throat> that death is real and that there is life after death. And that the body will one day be raised by the power of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No doubt the disciples were perplexed about several matters. First of all, if Jesus loved Lazarus so much, why did he permit him to get sick? Even more, why did he delay to go to the sisters? For that matter, could he not have healed Lazarus at a distance? As he did the nobleman's son in John chapter 4? The record makes it clear this morning, folks, that there was a strong love relationship between Jesus and this family. Yet our Lord's our Lord's behavior seemed to contradict his love. God's love <clears throat> for his own is not a pampering love. It is a perfecting love. The fact that he loves us and we love him is no guarantee that, he will, that we will be sheltered from the problems and the pains of life. I want to repeat that this morning. The fact that Jesus loves us and we love him is no guarantee that we will be sheltered from the problems and pain of life. After all, the Amen. father loves his son, and yet the father permitted his beloved son to drink the cup of sorrow and experience the shame and the pain of the cross. We must never think that love and suffering are incompatible. Suddenly, this morning, they unite 
in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Pain and suffering is a uniting in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Jesus could have prevented Lazarus sickness. He could have healed it from where he was. But he chose not to. He saw in this sickness an opportunity to glorify the Father. Are you seeing in your sickness to glorify God? Hallelujah. Yes, Are you amen. seeing in what your trial that you are going through this morning to give glory and honor to God? To glorify Hallelujah. God? It is not important that we Christians are comfortable. I repeat that. It is not important that we are comfortable as Christians. In fact, we are trying our best not to use the words Christian, but saints. But it's important that we glorify God in all that we do. God must get the glory. God must get the unique glory. He must get the final glory. Yes. In their prayer to Jesus, the two sisters, notice very clearly, did not tell him what to do. We have a number of believers today who want to tell Jesus what he should do. Come on, sir. <laughs> we want to tell the Holy Spirit what we should do or what he should do. But how about asking him, what do you want me Hallelujah. to do? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So back to the two sisters. They simply informed him that there was a need. And they reminded him of his love for Lazarus. Did you get those words this morning? Key words to remember. Key phrases to remember. They informed him of their need. And they reminded him. Of his love for Lazarus. <clears throat> because they knew it was dangerous. For Jesus to return to Judea. Because the Jewish leaders at the time. Were about to destroy him. Perhaps they hoped. That he would speak the word. And their brother would be restored to life. Sometimes folks we get into a comfortable place. And we say to the Lord, Lord, well, just do this mm. or just do that. Make, make it so easy for me that there, there will be a kind of comfort. Do you believe it was comfortable for him when he went to the cross? Oh, no. Do you Not believe it was comfortable? Do you believe it was comfort? To arrive to Sunday morning where he had to tell his own mother, don't touch me. My Lord. I have not yet gone to the Father. To be glorified. I have not like to be glorified. Do you believe this morning that it was comfortable? Mm. You see, as believers, we want to live in comfort. In fact, we're going through it a period of time where believers at this point in time want to, quote, unquote, get back to normal. My Lord. What is normal? Folks, let me declare to you, I'm not prophesying, I'm just declaring. It's going to get a whole lot worse before Jesus comes. My God. So are you ready to go through that period of time? Are you ready to go through this period? Of time, You see, okay. our Lord's message to the sisters did not say that their brother would not die. Mm. It promised only that death would not be the ultimate result. Hallelujah. For the ultimate result this morning, glory to God, is to be the glory of God. That's the ultimate. That's the final step point. That's the final footstop. In our lives. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Note that once again. Jesus called himself. The son of God. Yes. He wanted them to lay hold of this promise. Are we laying a hold of this promise this morning? Jesus. You have arisen. And you are the son of son God. Of God. Hallelujah. Jesus reminded Martha of this message. When she bought. 
at having the tomb open. Mm. Remember when she balked at having the tomb? Yes, but Lord, yes. he stinketh by now. Yes. Jesus mm. had to remind her to lay hold of this promise. I am I the son am. The, of God. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. When we find ourselves confronted by disease, disappointment, and delay, even death, our only encouragement that we have this morning is the word of God. We must live. We must live. We must live by faith and not by sight. Yes. Their situation seemed hopeless. Yet the sisters knew that Jesus was the master. Oh, glory to God. Is he not the master of every situation this morning? Yes. yes every situation. Every, every situation that you are being confronted with this morning, he is the master. He is in control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at this verse. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Martha, and her sister Martha. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. John chapter 11. What about our Lord's delay? He was not waiting for Lazarus to die. He was already dead. Mm. Jesus lived on a divine timetable. Are you thankful this morning that our master lives on a divine table, timetable? He does not live on your timetable or my timetable. Yes. When we feel good to do it or when we feel not good to do it, folks, there's never a good time to do it. All right. When it's on the Lord's divine timetable. And he was waiting. Jesus was waiting for the Father to tell him when to go to Bethany. The fact that the man had been dead four days gave greater authenticity to the yes. miracle and greater opportunity for people to believe, including his own disciples. That's right. When our Lord announced that he was returning to Judea, his disciples were alarmed. Because they knew how dangerous Judea was. You see, Jesus was willing to lay down his life for his friends. We heard that in our word of encouragement this morning. Laying down his life for his friends. You see, to be a branch in the vine means we are united to Christ and we share his life. As we abide in him, his life flows through us and produces fruit. It is possible, listen to me carefully this morning, folks. It is possible for the carnal Christian to produce works. But only the spiritual Christian can bear lasting fruit. Amen. Can I repeat that for you this morning? Amen, amen. All right. Jesus was willing to lay down his life for his friends. But to be a branch in the vine My means God. we are united to Christ and we share his life. Yes. As we abide in him, his life flows through us, through us. and produces fruit. We're not doing it on our own. Mm. It is possible for the carnal believer to produce works. But only the spiritual believer can bear lasting fruit. And I want us to Hallelujah. note something this morning. That the fruitful branches are purged. Mm. What yes, is purged? Yeah. The same word as clean. In what? Chastening us to make us more fruitful. In order for that rose bush in that garden right now, to bear beautiful roses this God spring, it. it must be pruned. Yes, yes. Hello. Tell us something, Pastor. God cleanses us through the word of God this morning. He chastens us to make us more fruitful. 
which helps to explain why a dedicated believer often has to go through suffering. That's right. All right. As believers this morning move from producing fruit to more fruit to much to fruit. much fruit, yes. The glory goes to the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's Hallelujah. give the Lord a hand offering right there this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> the evidences of the abiding life are a sense of the Savior's love. John 15, verse 9. Obedience to his word, verse 10. Answered prayer, verse 7. And joy, verse 11. All those are found in John chapter 15. Jesus knew that his return to Judea and the miracle of raising Lazarus would, would precipitate his own, uh, his own arrest mm -hmm. and his death. The Lord calmed their prayers, prayers or their fears by reminding them that he was on the Father's schedule. Whose schedule are you on this morning? My God. Whose schedule are you on? Are you on your own schedule? Are you on your family's schedule? Mm. When we are on the Father's schedule, hallelujah. That is the father. Nothing could harm him. My Nothing. God. Jesus reminded Nothing. them. But I'm here to tell you this morning that the disciples who walked with Jesus not only misunderstood the schedule, they, all, they, all, they also misunderstood the reason for the visit mm. to Judea. They thought that if Lazarus was sleeping, he was actually getting better. My Lord. See, we, we assume things. We assume what God is doing. Come yesterday on, was, quote, unquote, a silent day. Yesterday was a dark day. But you do know that God was at work? Yes. He's always at work. Hallelujah. In fact, when you think that he is not... That is the more time that he has at work. We heard our elder this morning. Amen. When you think that you're in the, the, the hot tub with some kids, oh, God is not at work. Yes, he oh, is at work. Yes, he is. Check the conversation. All right? So God is at work, even in the areas where you think that he is not working. Stop thinking and allow the Holy Spirit to use you in that moment. It was another example of the disciples' inability to grasp spiritual truth. If he is sleeping, he must be improving. So don't, don't, don't even bother Jesus to go to Bethany. Then he told them openly that Lazarus was dead. Jesus said in John chapter 11, verse 4, when he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it's for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Hallelujah. But perhaps the greatest transformation Jesus performed was to move the doctrine of the resurrection out of the future and bring it into the present. Martha was looking to the future, you see, knowing that Lazarus would rise again and she would see him. Her friends were looking to the past and saying he could have prevented Lazarus from dying. We see that in verse 37. But Jesus tried to center their attention to the present, wherever he is. Hello? Wherever the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Glory to his name. God's resurrection power is available to us now. Don't wait for tomorrow. 
Don't talk about what happened yesterday. God's resurrection power is available now. You see, sin and the old nature are very hard masters. The unsaved person is a slave to sin, Ephesians 2. But even many, many believers still serve sin, even though their slavery to sin has been broken by Christ. People read Romans 5, 1 to 21, and they discovered that Jesus died for their sins and received him into their hearts. But they failed to take up the words of Romans 6 and discover the glorious liberty they now have in Christ. If you would take the time, and I'm going to take the time this morning, let me just go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. And I want to read from 1 to 10. And I'll read the NLT uh, version this morning. Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, we, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we join him in his death. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. And since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him we are sure of this because christ was raised from the dead and we will never die again death no longer has power over him when he died he died once to break the power of sin and now that he lives he lives for the glory of god the old nature can no longer reign as king over the believer who knows the truth, reckons on it, and yields themselves to the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus affirmed that believers would one day be raised from the dead. Not only are we celebrating Jesus' resurrection this morning, we are also looking to where we are going to be when we are also raised from the dead. John eleven twenty five. He immediately revealed the added truth that some believers would never, never die. Wait a minute. Double negative. Never, never die? How is this possible? Well, the answer is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's go there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 13 and verse 18. NLT version. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. Folks, I just received a call this week from a community person, and they said, Pastor, I have lost my husband, I have lost my sister, and I have lost a cousin all within the past three weeks. She said, Pastor, I want you to come and bury them for us. I said, do you know me? No, I don't. 
Someone told me about you. Someone said, talk to that man who preaches over at Bethel. He will come. He will bring his deacon. And he will come and he will bury your loved ones. You know what? There is an opportunity, folks. There is an opportunity to proclaim liberty of the captive. There is opportunity to bury loved ones Hallelujah. and lift up that individual who desires to have the pastor of Bethel Life Center come and bury their loved ones. Amen. And see, when Jesus returns in the year to take his people home, those who are alive at his coming shall never die. Amen. The Bible says they shall be changed mm. and caught up to meet him in the air. Hallelujah. Martha did not hesitate to affirm her faith. She used three different titles actually for Jesus. Lord, Christ, which means Messiah, and Son of God. Keep in mind that salvation is not a set of rules. Salvation is life. The life is a person. That person is Jesus Christ. You see, when dead sinners hear the voice of the Son of God, that's the word. And they believe they're given eternal life. To reject that word this morning is to be dead forever. My God. In conclusion this morning, if you are dead in your doubts, let's read verse 16 of John chapter 11. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, also said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. If you're dead in your discouragement this morning, if your discouragement is leading you to reject, to rejection, read verse 20 of chapter 11. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at home. If you are dead in your delay this morning, something you're waiting on, something you're waiting for, read verse 17 and 21 and 22, 23 to 26. So technically from 17 to 26. Read it on his, <laughs> on his arrival. Okay, let's go then. All right, let's go. John chapter 11. Verse 17 to 26. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in the grave for four days. Remember, Martha said he stinks by now. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem, but many of the people had come to counsel Martha and Mary in their loss. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes. She understood that. She said, yes. He will rise when everyone else rises at the at last the day. resurrection, yes. But Jesus told her, oh, listen to this. Hallelujah. I am the resurrection yes. and the life. Anyone Hallelujah. who believes in me will live even after dying. Hello. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die.
Do you believe this, Martha? Yes. Do you believe this, people of God, this morning? Death has no weapon. Death has no sting. The grave does not have the victory. Hallelujah. Jesus has the victory. The resurrection this morning is not an event, folks. We are not celebrating an event this morning. We are celebrating the person. The person of Jesus Christ. You see, in, in, in verse 43 and 44, Jesus uh, called out in a vo loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Are you walking in grave clothes this morning? I want to let you know that you are liberated. You are free. Don't Hallelujah. continue. Take off the grave clothes. God has called you forth to life. If God had said, come forth, all the dead would have risen and come forth. But he was specific. So those things that are dead, dead in delay, dead in discouragement, dead in doubt, call them forth. And take off the grave clothes this morning. Do take you believe this? Do you believe this? I am the resurrection yes. and the life. The Hallelujah. one who believes in me will live even though they die. Hallelujah. Take off the grave clothes this morning. Yes. Remove the grave clothes. Don't just celebrate resurrection as an event. Celebrate the person. Of Jesus Christ. It must come. We must come to the place. Where God gets the glory. We don't. Desire the glory. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus. Lives. Today. Amen. Bless you. Hallelujah. Oh blessed be the name glory of the Lord. Glory to God. Bless your name Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He hallelujah. Lives. He lives. Yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. He lives. He lives. Glory to God. He lives. Hallelujah. Yes. Remove Bless your you. friend clothes today. Thank you Jesus. Amen. Remove those clothes that are being thank binding you. Thank you Jesus. Ah, thank you. Glory to your name. Remove what's binding you. Binding. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Pastor God. Mel, would you wrap up today, please? Oh, surprise. In prayer. In prayer. <laughs> Thank you for that powerful word, Bishop, this morning. Um, we do have a clearer understanding of what the resurrection is all about. The resurrection is not a thing or an event you mark off on your calendar. But the resurrection is the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are living the resurrected life. Hallelujah. Amen. God gave us resurrection power where we can speak to situations. Amen. Yes. Amen. And we can speak life. Hallelujah. Oh, oh glory. Use your words to speak life to life. somebody in this dark and dying world. Give them a lifeline. Understand that if Jesus is the resurrection, the same power that God used to raise him from the dead resides in you. Amen. So, Father God, Amen. we want to thank you. We want to thank you for resurrection power. Lord God, now we ask that you give us the wisdom to leave those things that should be dead, leave them in the grave. But Father God, those things that are dead that need to be resurrected, give us right now the wisdom to call them forth. Father mm -hmm. God, if we are still wearing grave clothes, I ask for the wisdom to remove them right now in yes. the mighty name of Jesus, that we would move about freely because we know in you there is liberty. Father God, you told us to stand fast in the liberty that makes us free and not to be entangled with the yoke of bondage again. Do not oh, be entangled in the grave clothes. Come forth, Lazarus. Hallelujah yes. to God. In the name and of Jesus. Live. 
We thank you right now for your word, oh God. We thank you for the speaker. We thank you for using him mightily on today. And even God, as we leave this meeting, but never from your presence, let us check ourselves to make sure that all the grave clothes have been removed, that we might move about freely, that we don't stink like death, oh God, but we create a sweet smelling fragrance unto your nostrils by calling out your holy name and lifting you up. Lord God, we just thank you today. We thank you for your love, for you so loved the world that you gave us Jesus, and he so loved us that he gave us his life. Mm. God, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, and this is my prayer today. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise